Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Welcome to Rack of the Week, episode number two. This one's a pretty wide open rack, kind of like episode one, but I think it's an interesting study in paths to pockets and how to make decisions when you kind of have lots of options. Let's get into the rack. This week I'm playing on a diamond with four and three eighths inch pockets, Simonis 860. My cue ball is just inside of the parallel line. I've got a little bit of an inside angle, and I'm hitting the rack ball in the center or low, so I decide to just use a low cue ball, get the cue ball to the side rail. Typically, the balls open pretty well if you rack them tightly on this table. You really can't ask for more from a rack of straight pool. This is a great layout. There's probably a dozen different ways to run these balls, but this camera angle is a little bit low, so let's take a look at an overhead view and I'll talk through what I see from this rack and how I plan to go about running it. The first step is always identify potential break balls. The nine ball sticks out as the most obvious choice. Something that I've been doing a whole lot lately and plan to keep doing is when identifying potential break balls early in the rack, look for a key ball for that break ball immediately as well. So obviously the eight ball is a great key ball and then look for a key two ball. So if the 8 is my key ball, probably the 7 is the best key 2 ball. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to commit to those right now, but at least I know that the possibility is there. Um, the next break shot uh, that I see might be the 3 ball. It's very low, but uh, I'll definitely be able to contact the corner of the rack. There's a number of balls that will function as key balls for the 3. Uh, the 4 ball is also in a good position right now. It's close to the rack, but it'll also work. The six ball might be a good key ball for it. And if I use the six as a key ball, I think the eight would be the best key two ball. So if I end up using the four, I'm going to think about preserving those balls. I don't think there's an emergency. I've got enough options for break balls. Right now, what I want to do is figure out a way to maneuver around all these balls. I'd, since the balls open so well, I might be best to try and run this rack without running into another ball, if possible. It won't be the end of the world if we have to, but I only want to run into another ball for a good reason. So let's take a look at how I might begin running this rack. First, I want to identify any trouble balls, and the 15 is the closest thing I've got. Really not much trouble. It's an up table ball, so I kind of want to decide whether to go get it early or late. It's not a problem to save it for later in the rack as long as I have an easy way to shoot it and get back down table. The uh, next thing to look at is paths to pockets. And as I look at the table, the first thing I notice is the 4111 is kind of a shooting gallery to the lower left corner pocket, but the three and the five ball are in the way. So it's likely that the three and the five ball are gonna go in the lower left corner first, and they'll need to get pocketed before I can address the 4, 1, and 11. The 13 ball I don't think passes the 14, so I have a shot on the 14 right now, but if I don't shoot it, then I'm really looking at the 13 and 14, both going in the lower right corner. And that's really what I see as the key to the rack. And the, the thing that I decide is to use the 12 ball as a connector. The 12 ball is going to set me up on the 13 and 14, or one of those balls, and then I can address the balls in the center of the table. So I have two shots to begin with. That's either the 14 or the 7. Uh, the 14 obviously is the easiest shot, but the position in is, isn't as easy. I mean, sure, I could stun it forward or draw it back and shoot the 13 ball and go from there. And a lot of players might choose that. What I see is because the 7 ball is very close to straight in, it's a super high percentage shot. I don't see any negative with removing the 7 ball now. Plus, I can move my cue ball to center table. And when you've got so many options... Center table is a great place to be. You can evaluate what to do from there. So that's how I decide to begin the rack, is to shoot the seven, go to center table. I'm hoping that the cue ball stops where I can see the 12, and then I can go from the 12 to the 13, 14. So let's shoot the seven ball and then see if and how my plan adjusts from there. Yeah. 
So the cue ball went a little bit farther than I hoped. I can't see the 12 ball right now. I have three shots. I can shoot the nine ball, which removes a break ball, and I got to crash into balls. So that's not a good option. I've got a back cut on the six ball on the side or a sh sharp cut in the corner, which doesn't lead to anything. So this is the time to remove the up table ball. And I make a decision to play for the 12 ball again. Well, I got a shot on the 12 ball, but it's not the angle I wanted. I could go below the 14 and come around to center table again, but that's not going to advance my plan where I've looked at paths to pockets and where I want to shoot these balls. So for that reason, I decide to shoot the six ball on the side, come back to center table just above the rack, hopefully get a shot on the 12 or a shot on the eight to set me up for the 12. You know, I got to say that that last shot of mine, I think it's a good example of the difference between a really good player and a pro player because a pro probably would have made a little bit more of an effort and definitely made more of a firm decision about how far they wanted the cue ball to travel off the second rail to make sure they get a good angle on the 12. I don't think I put in that much effort so it reminds me of something I heard a long time ago about nine ball players a good motto when you're playing nine ball to keep in mind is fight for the angle. And I think it's the same thing for straight pool. You've got to realize that you need to fight for the angle. So if you keep that in mind, then you're not going to take those decisions so casually or ignore them like I just did. There we go, I'm on my 12 ball now. But it took me four shots to do so, four out of the 13 balls that were on the table in order to accomplish step one of my plan. And I've shot off both of my best key balls. I'm still in okay shape, but that's a, largely a result of the fact that it's a wide open rack. Uh, if the balls were more clustered and I didn't have as many options, I might be in real trouble. I had two chances to get on the 12 ball before I did, and I failed both times. That shows you how important it is to fight for that angle. Anyway, now I've got my shot on the 12, and I want to get a low angle on either the 13 or the 14. This is really a bread and butter shot, getting an inside angle on a low ball so that you can move the cue ball into the center of the table, oftentimes to re-break the rack or to open clusters. So let's see how that works out. Obviously, I only need to go into those balls real gently, both because I have an insurance balls with the three and the five, and I hope that the four or the one would become a, a better break shot. So that worked out really well, and at this point, the rack is solved. That means there's no trouble balls at all. I have more than one potential break ball, and I need to select a pattern, a pretty decisive pattern that I want to use to run the remaining balls. Notice also that the only balls that are left are in the center of the table. So I've removed the balls on the outside. Now the balls remaining are on the inside, leaving the rails available for me to maneuver the cue ball. I only have six shots left. Obviously, the four ball is the best break ball. It's closer to the rack. And the one ball is a good cue ball for the four. So what order should I shoot these in? Obviously, my next shot is going to be either the three ball or the five. What ball will be my K2 ball, or the ball that sets me up for the one ball? Right now, the nine ball is probably the best ball, but I don't see a comfortable way to get a straight-in shot in the corner pocket in order to get on the one ball. So I look at this a little bit and decide to use the three ball to move the nine ball up. So then I'll have two potential key balls. Uh, hopefully in the side pocket. I think it's a pretty safe shot. The balls are close enough together that I'm going to hit that nine ball full. My next shot is going to be the five for sure. If something goes wrong, I should have a shot on the one or the nine, but I, I anticipate I'll be able to shoot the five and uh, make a firm plan once I see where the nine ball goes.
that worked out really nicely and the end pattern miraculously instantly comes into view a stop shot on the nine on the side gives me a nice stop shot on the one ball a stop shot on the 11 in the other side pocket gives me a stop shot on the nine and I can use the 14 ball easily to maneuver my cue ball real close to uh, straight in on the 11 ball on the side. So my opening shot is a uh, soft draw on the five. I want to come two rails out of the corner to ensure that I have a nice angle on the 14 ball to accomplish my goal. And I came past straight into the side on the 11. It's an example of how precise speed control in the game of straight pool makes the game so much easier. Now my first inclination was to go ahead and shoot the 11 anyway, send the cue ball to the bottom rail and up for the 9 in the side, or possibly the 9 in the corner. But it didn't take me long to realize that I still could achieve a stop shot end pattern. I noticed right away that I'm pretty close to straight into the corner right now on the nine ball, which leaves me straight in on the 11 ball in the other corner. And a stop shot on the 11 leaves me straight into the one ball in the corner. Now this end pattern involves two straight in shots, long shots into upper corner pockets. But as a straight pool player, you need to love straight in stop shots for your end pattern because it gives you 100% certainty that you're going to get onto the break ball for the next rack. And that is far more important than having a short shot that has even a small chance of going astray. Oh, brother, do not rush your shots the way I just did on that one ball. I just barely made it, and uh, that's how your runs can come to an end. Here's an animation of the travel path of the cue ball during this entire rack. As you consider other patterns that you might have chosen to run out this rack, think about the overall travel distance of the cue ball and the number of times that it contacts the rail or other balls as you evaluate your pattern's chances of success. I hope you found that entertaining and informative. Leave a comment if you notice something that I didn't mention. Also, let me know if there's uh, certain types of issues that you're dealing with, and I'll see if I can find a rack that represents that, and we can kind of have a dialogue of what, try and figure out what works best. As always, head over to www.shortstoponpool.com to check out my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool, and I'll see you next time.